good morning okay so uh, we have discussed the the different parts of the segmental arch we'll see one by one explanation part here okay so now elements of the segmental arch what we have just now discussed so we will go to the definition a very faster intradose this is the inner curve of the arch what do you mean by inner curve can you see this diagram intradose is the inner curve this is the inner curve okay so that is intradose so i have written it here so i will make a little bit bigger one for your understanding okay intradose second point soffit what do you mean by this soffit it is the inner surface of the arch it is also called as intradose so you have two names for the inner curve one is intradose sometimes it is also called by the name soffit it is also called by the name soffit so here this is the again you can tell it as sometimes this surface so this surface is also called by soffit so a small difference is there intradose is the curve name curve name name of the curve soffit is the surface soffit is the surface Gener a very small one but generally there is no differentiation between intradose and soffit sometimes you call it as intradose sometimes you call it as soffit okay soffit third point what is the third point extradose this one we have seen extradose is the outer curve okay it's very very easy so we have seen this one can again go back here so extradose what is that extradose extradose this line or what is this this exterior curve this is the exterior curve okay now the, it has written visors what do you mean by this visor visors are the wedge shaped units these are called as wedge shaped units of masonry forming arch means what you are going to use these visors you are going to use these visors okay where are the visors these are the visors 1 2 3 4 5 6 like all are visors all are visors so special visor we call it as keystone special type of visor we call it as keystone so all these are called as visors these are wedge shaped wedge shaped means like this okay so one edge is bigger another is smaller so this form what masonry this forming what masonry construction can you re uh, rewind your uh, previous classes definition of masonry masonry is a construction which building units are used and suitable mortar is used building units plus mortar that construction is called as masonry try to remember the previous classes okay so like this we are going to see one by one crown what do you mean by this crown highest part of the extradose remember here what is this crown is the highest portion highest part it is not a, what is that place it is a place it is a place or the location on the this one so crown in the diagram where you can see here okay this is the crown crown okay key what do you mean by this key key is the wedge shaped unit fixed at the crown now you understand crown is a highest portion key is the unit at the crown key is the unit at the crown okay key we call it as unit at the crown from here in this diagram you can see here okay where you can see crown this is the highest part key is the unit fixed at the crown portion unit fixed at the crown portion okay spandrel okay spandrel this is the curved triangle space formed between the extradose and horizontal line through the crown extradose and horizontal line through the crown okay remember this word spandrel in the diagram where you can see this is the spandrel this is the spandrel now what is that 
a horizontal line through the crown this is the horizontal line through the crown and this extra dose this extra dose this extra dose and this extra dose i hope it is now clear so this uh, triangle portion we call it as a spandrel so once again i will tell there is a horizontal line drawn from the crown and between extra dose this is one extra dose and this is also another extra dose so this forms what triangle portion that we are calling it as a spandrel okay i hope it is now clear skew back what is this skew back it is the inclined portion splayed is also nothing but inclined only on the abutment it is on the abutment which is prepared to receive the arch which is prepared to receive the arch and skew back from this skew back arch is going to spring spring means what it will start start okay now where i can show the skew back here skew back here this portion i will draw first here like this skew back is the portion of the abutment it is the portion of the abutment from there this arch will start this arch will start i hope it is now clear so this skew back will receive the arch what do you mean by that receiving the arch from this skew back the arch load is transferred to the abutment okay it is like this so from this uh, whatever the load is there from the top it is coming like this and it is coming like this half here go half here this side will go and skew back this unit will receive the load from the arch and transfers to the abutment i hope it is now clear okay springing joints what is this springing joints these are the points from which curve begins curve of the arch will begin okay so can you see this diagram springing point where i can mark the springing point here one springing point here one another springing point from here arch will start or you can say curve portion will start curve portion will start okay so the units are called as springers points are called as springing point okay obviously the imaginary line joining two springer point is called as springing line is called as springing line okay here springing line just now we have seen it is a imaginary line just now we have seen springer it is the first visor it is the first visor at the springing level and it is immediately next to the skew back it is immediately next to the skew back what is that name springer it is springer you can show here immediately after the skew back means what this immediately after the skew back this this these are called as springers so that is why i have written it here springers okay springers are the first visors visor is a common term special visors are springers special visor is keystone special visor is keystone springer is at the bottom most portion keystone is the uppermost portion i hope it is now clear okay abutment what is this abutment end support of the arch pier is the intermediate support of the arcade i have just now drawn no if multiple arches are there like this intermediate supports are called as piers exterior supports are called as abutments exterior supports last support of this bridge last support of this bridge or something whatever may be the structure the last supports are called as abutments which are generally bigger or heavier the intermediates which are little bit less thickness little bit compared to this these are also heavy only compared to this little bit less okay so these are called as piers okay what is here arcade so just now told no it is the row of arches like this one arch two arch three arch like this it is a row of arch then we call it as arcade which is in continuation it is in continuation
haunch what is this haunch haunch is the lower half of the arch between crown and skewback so where i can show here okay haunch it is the lower half of the arch it is the lower half of the arch between crown and between skewback between the crown and skewback this lower half is called as what haunch it is called as haunch okay try to remember okay so for you people i'm drawing <coughs> i'm making it easier okay so no need not worry about this imposed it is not shown in the diagram that is why it is difficult to explain here it is the projecting course at the upper part of the pier or an abutment to stress the springing line so okay i just i will try to do, do this one here you can see if if something is projecting outside if something is projecting outside then we call it as imposed then we call it as imposed that is not drawn here that is not so important okay something is projecting outward if some building unit is projecting outward in abutment or in pier that unit we call it as imposed that is called as imposed okay so that is not shown here hmm? let us see if it is there in the other diagram when we are discussing that we'll we'll just go through that okay okay now some masonry points are there what is this bed joint these are the joints between the visors which radiate from the center where you can show the bed joints here bed joint in this diagram i can show this joint joints you have studied in the module 2 okay different types of joint mortar joint whatever may be you have studied now there are two units are there which are joined by the mortar and this joining portion wherever that joining portion is there that is called as bed joint that is called as a bed joint i hope it is now clear in this diagram you can see in this diagram where you can see the bed joint this joint this total joint this joint this total joint is called as a bed joint in this diagram where uh, in in this one where you can see yes here i can show no this is the bed joint this is the bed joint so two units joined by the mortar that is a joint so it's a bigger surface is joining that means it is a bed joint okay now very important center or striking point this is a geometrical center from where arch forming extrados arch forming intrados are described means what if this is a imaginary center if you draw this is a first point from there you can draw the arch no for another line if the joint you can draw the arch no so this imaginary point we generally call it as center or striking point so this where we can show here yes here this is the center this is the center or striking point from there this curve we, we can draw the curves we can draw the curves of different radius or diameter okay like this span i have explained clear horizontal distance between the supports 1 2 3 4 clear horizontal distance okay span we have also discussed rise clear vertical distance between highest point and intradoors okay highest point on the intradoors and springing line where you can see here in this diagram okay be alert okay we are discussing very important part okay this is the intradoors okay this is the highest part in the intradoors this is the springing line the clear vertical distance between this point and this springing line we call it as rise we call it as rise clear distance we call it as what between two supports we call it as span we call it as span okay depth or height or thickness okay now we can, in the diagram only i will show once again using that diagram depth or height 
thickness these two terms how i can show here here in this diagram this is called as depth or height this is called as depth or height this distance this this is called as thickness this is called as thickness okay now impost was not shown in that diagram it is shown here okay the projecting surface the projecting surface from the abutment from the abutment that is called as impost that's called as impost okay now this very very important term what is mean by this one stability stability of the arch so how they are telling arch transmits the superimposed load whatever the load is there it will transmit the superimposed load to the side walls to the side walls or we call it as abutments through friction through friction between the surfaces of visors and cohesion of mortar so in the diagram how we can explain how you can explain okay easily if there is a load coming on here stability of the arch we are discussing the load will be transferred by this arch load will be transferred by this arch to the piers or the to the abutments by two things by two things one is friction between the wagers friction between the wagers second is the mortar is there no the mortar joint strength the mortar joint strength how load is there it will push the wagers like this it will push the wagers or it will compress the wagers and in the meantime it will compress means what there will be friction there will be friction between this and this this and this like this continuous friction as well as there is a mortar strength there will be a mortar strength okay so what statement you can see here it will transfer using friction as well as cohesion friction between the wiser surfaces cohesion of the mortar that means cohesion is nothing but mortar strength that will be mortar strength so another point is that what every element wiser keystone skew back whatever the elements are there now in the arch remains in compression means what like this block is there here is load is there here is load compression is always acting compression is always acting on each element okay and and it has to bear the transverse shear it has to bear the transverse shear transverse shear how you can see here in this diagram transverse shear means like this so shear means cutting force no so here if that force is acting like this one side upward another side or either downward and upward this will act as what shear transverse shear i hope you have understood shear force means if it is a horizontal member if any cutting force acting upon this element then we call it as shear or transverse shear so in this one if there is a one cutting force like this another cutting force like this these are this will act as a transverse shear okay so cutting forces like this so load is coming downward this is resisting that means what transverse shear is acting upon all the elements all the elements okay so you have major four types of failures you have major four types of failures in the arches one is crushing of the masonry sliding of the wires rotation of the joint uneven settlement of the abutment okay uneven settlement we will discuss it in the next class